So this here is my specialized uh, Diverge 2018 model and I let it paint in British Racing Green. I let uh, paint the bike by Trebenice here in the Philippines. This is the second time that I make my bike uh, and I have to say they're doing a very good job. Uh -huh. A little bicycle on the fork in the front. My YouTube channel, Cycling to Adventure. The typical S-Works and my initials on the top tube. To have some new color scheme on my bike and uh, I will build now the bike. And I will show you as well all the components I'm using as well how long it took me to build. I will try to build this bike uh, only with the tools I normally carry around with me when I am on a bike trip. So here's all my stuff which I took off uh, two months ago from this bike and now will uh, rebuild my bike. Few parts will be replaced. So I have here my old handlebar which is a Ritchie Beacon which will be replaced by a Redshift top shelf bar and I have here as well the new Redshift uh, bar back. I will talk more about this later. Some new brake pads. Brakes will be red. This is for my previous bike and uh, it's uh, the model 2020. I know there's a new version out as well. The shifters will come red. I'm using a mullet XX1 in the back of my bike. I'm using a lot of redshift components, as you see here, the new drop shift uh, comfort. I will have some redshift bar tape on the bike this time. New brake hoses, new bearings for the steering. I put back my fit lock bottle cages to hold the bottles magnetic. I love it, it's very, very good. Uh, as I am using the Future Shock, and the original bike had the Future Shock uh, 1.0, this is a 1.5. Uh, which is still all right. And if this one will be out, then I will try to work with a rigid fork. So I have a lot of Redshift components on my bike. This is the shock post from Redshift, which I really, really love. You can adjust the, the spring system inside and the tension, how much it should have. You, there's another video on my channel where you can see more about it. One of the best upgrades I have done on my bike. As well from Redshift, I having the aero bars on my bikes, which I love because they are very easy to take off and put on. Uh, also some replacements I having at the moment different uh, pads here. I get some new ones from Redshift, I get back on the bike. Uh, I normally run fork packs in the front. When I go bike packing, I will leave them off for this time, but, uh, Normally they're sitting here in the front for the fork packs. Uh, this one will stay off for the time. I use a different system, which is called tail fin at the moment. I'm running a wax chain, so the chain is not dirty. This is a wax chain. I prefer wax chains because the bike stays uh, much, much cleaner with a wax chain and much quieter. Wheels, uh, wheels need some cleaning. I running a Zip 303 Firecrest and my cassette is uh, F10 to 50 or 10 to 52. So before I had the bar back from Rafa, which now get exchanged with the new top shelf handle bar back from uh, Redshift. I have here my bleeding kit to bleed the brakes which is needed when you replace all the brake hoses. Uh, and this is pretty much all the tools I need to repair my bike 
when I'm on the road. So the chain breaker looks a little bit uh, rusty, but does the job. I prefer Allen keys instead of multi-tool, a small ply, another chain lock, and as well getting the tires off. I don't run tubeless, I run on tubes. I using uh, TPU tubes. I always carry some spare missing links. And let's go and uh, have the bike put back together. I got my frame as a specialized ride. Ready to conquer whatever's outside from Gravel to mountain, streets so wide. With every turn, it feels so right. Oh, building it up, one part of there's a little hole which needs to be aligned with this screw and then it should fit perfectly in the hole there is no torque required you just screw it light in you just screw it lightly in and that's it The tension, as I say, comes from the two screws which are inside here and then the lock screw is coming on top so the screws are not losing by themselves. So on top you have the collar clamp ring which has a little gap just here where the screw which is inside here comes pushed down exactly into this gap. So you need to align exactly the gap of the clump with the hole and the screw here in the front. Before you can insert your future shock, you have to place the cover back on, as you can see here. And after this, you could use the rings, which would come here, and then the future shock is insert the spacers, so it doesn't use any spacers. So I just can dot the future shock back in. So these little screws I have taken out for the moment, you not have to take out actually total. They have a hole where the Allen key for the lower screw, for the adjustment screw, will actually pass through. Make sure you have a very good set of Allen keys, not to ruin your, your screw. And as well, you not have to over tighten it. So one problem which I have seen with the future shock is always this rubber cover breaks very easily, especially when you ride a lot of, 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 of gravel. So what I have done, I have built my own, which is coming on top of it and protects it from the elements, especially when it's raining and muddy, which will help the future shock to live much, much longer. So even if you have a new special item work, please build yourself a cover because this is what will ruin your future shock in the end. I have uh, used already four future shocks in the lifespan of this bike. Uh, each of them has made around 20,000 kilometers. I serviced them myself. There's a video on the channel as well. But do yourself a favor. From an old uh, tube, you can easily build a little cover which goes over over you pull it all the way down over the screws and it will cover your future shock and you get a much better lifespan out of it so you see me here i working without a torque wrench so i highly recommend that you use a torque wrench uh, i will only screw everything on and tighten everything up a little bit later with a torque wrench but when you're out on the road on a bike tour or whatever you not always have a torque wrench so it's also a little bit about feeling. Don't over tighten your screws. It will cost you only a lot of money and a lot of stress. I'm on my side, we're crossing the line. Mullet set up shifts, smooth as can be. My dream machine, it's all about me. So I'm not sure if you have seen this. I just connected two hoses with uh, electrical tape to pull it through the frame 
especially here on the bottom bracket from upstairs to come here. It's very easy. The difficult part is coming here and finding the way through here. You can use a needle, a magnet and a thrian. Something like this. When you have a very strong magnet, you can guide it all the way through and then fix the on the tube and then just pull it through. But uh, with the electrical tape always works very well for me. So that's the way how I do it and never had a problem. So there's uh, one thing I'm doing to prevent my handlebar from corrosion. <clears throat> I'm a very strong sweater. So instead just wiping some uh, electrical tape over the handlebar, especially in the areas where my grips, I am using an old inner tube, which I cut in some strips and then wrap it around my handlebar. This as well gives a little bit more cushioning and holds much better than electrical tape. And no sweat gets under there if you put it very strong around your handlebar. So now when we come to saddle, I have uh, two favorites. One is the 3D printed specialized diverge power. And the other one is the E1X Infinity from Infinity. Uh, both of the saddles belong to my favorites. I will now with the new setup uh, go first and have a look how is my specialized and then maybe after a couple of rides as well with the Infinity. Please do not clump your bike like this into a stand. You might break your frame. So this is not clumped. This is just very, very light put on so I can adjust the saddle height and uh, the rest what I like to adjust. Mounted up front, redshift shines. Keeps my stance firm on the climbs. Every bolt, every gear I align. This ride is mine, pure design. Oh, I'm building it up, one part at a time. With the SRAM arm on my side, we're crossing Almost done with the bike. Next is we will put the bar tape on. We will start here with the bar tape as we have the cruise control grips from Redshift coming on this Redshift handlebar. This is the Redshift uh, top shelf handlebar with 70 millimeter rise. My, I hope this uh, will be good. I take all the spacers out, which been here, which have uh, given me for 25 millimeters. So I have another 40 millimeter extra rise as well when I had the specialized handlebar, which has as well a rise of 2.5 centimeter. So the, the total raise I have now additional is two centimeters, which will help me to be in a little bit more upright position to get a little bit more comfort. So I have extra long handlebar tape from Redshift and I believe uh, half of it will be enough for one side. We will see. Mounted up front, redshift shines Keeps my stance firm on the climbs Every bolt, every gear I align This ride is mine, pure design Oh, building it up One part at a time With the SRAM arm on my side We're crossing the, the Drop control grips from redshift A good hint is to fold the grip back a little bit uh, if you have a red shift handlebar, there will be a mark where you should start with your where you should start with your bar tape. So you roll this a little bit back, you slide it all the way on, and then you just roll it over the bar tape. So you get a very clean uh, finish. 
Wow. You have then here an adjustment screw where you can tighten it when you fight the right uh, position for your grip. So this is the dropper cruise control bar from Redshift, which I'm testing out. So unfortunately it uh, gets now too dark to continue, but all over, the bike is ready for the first test ride, which will be tomorrow. And I have to say, I love the color. I love the look with the black and gold and green. Def Definitely what is neat on this bike now is a gold chain. So next time I will get a new chain. Definitely it will be a gold chain fitting to the golden cassette. Two other small accessory, maybe in uh, gold screws on the, on the front. Maybe a good idea on the steam and I love the look of the bike. In the front, the top shelf handlebar back from Redshift. Thank you very much Redshift for the back. Uh, the back is sponsored by Redshift to me, as well as the bar tape. All the other items from Redshift, the uh, top shelf handlebar, the seat post, my aero bars, are all bought by myself. I as well have the seat post, which uh, you have two positions in. Uh, unfortunately, it's still in Germany. But yeah, I love the Redshift uh, stuff and uh, I will make a review shortly coming for this uh, bag. It looks very nice. I believe it's, it's quite good. Easy to open, easy to close on the fly. Two zippers, one left, one right. So we will see how useful this bag can be to me. So guys, please let me know what you think about the bike. Please uh, give me a like, thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and uh, see you next time. Thank you for watching. So this is the finish of my uh, new bike build of my specialized uh, Diverge S-Works with SRAM red mullet in the back top shelf, handlebar, top shelf, back, redshift, suspension seat post and uh, what is missing is my aero bus which are as well from redshift and uh, will come up soon.